Welcome back to part two of the stage automation presentation. In this part, I'm going to show um, how stage automation actually works. Okay, so the first part of showing how the stage automation works, I'm going to use, try and use a block diagram to show how a basic system works. So, to start with, we have a motor. This could be a three-phase motor, a DC motor, a servo motor. Um, doesn't really matter for the purposes of, of um, trying to explain what's going on. So we'll assume a three-phase motor. Now a normal three-phase motor, four-pole motor, go travels about 1500 RPM revolutions per minute. So at full speed. Okay. This will be connected to a gearbox. A typical ratio might be 25 to 1. And that means for every 25 revolutions that the motor is doing over here, the output of the gearbox over here is only doing one revolution. Which means um, the output here the 1500 revolutions per minute over here, divided by 25, we're at 60 RPM over here. 60 revolutions a minute, one revolution a second. If we've got our winch drum here, off to our load with our wire rope around it, um, if this was for instance, say 100 millimeters diameter, that's 314 millimeters circumference, 100 times pi. We know it's turning at one revolution a second, so we know when this is traveling at full speed, the load is traveling at 314 millimeters a second in this example. Okay. But it won't always be travelling at 1500 RPM. We want it to travel between any speed between 0 and 1500 RPM. So we want a variable speed. So we need a VSD, a variable speed drive. And in this example, it will be an AC motor inverter. For a servo motor, it will be a servo drive. For a DC motor, it will be a DC drive. Um, but whichever it is, it will be the VSD, it will be the variable speed drive. Um, and the variable speed drive needs to be given the needs to be given the information as to how fast it's got to travel and in which direction. So this will come from the control system. Now, very often, that's a PLC, a programmable logic controller. Certainly, AVW use PLCs. Many of the other automation. Uh, suppliers use PLCs. The alternative would be some dedicated hardware, motion control hardware. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll put in PLC, since that's what we use, that's what others use. So the PLC has to give the variable speed drive its information. The information being direction, in this case up or down, and Speed. Now the control system needs to be told by the operator what, where to go, what, what position do we want to go to, how fast do we want to travel at, how much acceleration, deceleration do we want to do. So for that we have an HMI, Human Machine Interface. Now this could be a computer, a laptop, um, a touch screen. Or a, or a console, which generally has a computer inside it. And this gives information in the form of target speed Axel D cell as a minimum. Um, so 
on, a, on the key sheet on the, on the HMI on the computer, so we'll have the target position, the speed that we want it to travel at, how fast we want it to accelerate to that speed, how fast we want to decelerate to that speed, and then the control, the PLC, will take that information and turn that into direction and speed to give to the variable speed drive. And the output from the control system will be a, a trapezoidal move. Accelerate, travel at speed, choose when to decelerate, decelerate, stop, land at position. But how does it know it's reached position? At the moment, it doesn't. And we do that by having an encoder connected to the motor. Very often the encoder is mounted on the back of the motor, sometimes it's mounted onto the gearbox, sometimes it's mounted onto the winch, but very often on the back of the motor. So if this, and the encoder gives out uh, pulses, as it's, ro as it's rotating, it's giving out pulses. And these pulses come back to the control system and they're counted by the control. So, by knowing how many pulses are coming out, it knows how fast the motor is travelling and also can keep up with where the winch is by counting the pulses. So if there were, for instance, a thousand pulses per revolution here, it's a 1500 RPM motor, so this is turning 25 times a second, which means at full speed, this encoder is giving 25 times 1,000, 25,000 pulses per second to the control system. So if we were asking, so if the control system were asking the motor to go 50%, it's expecting 12,500 pulses back. And so by measuring the number of pulses coming back, it knows how fast the system is going. And that is called a closed loop. It's a closed loop control. Also, we can scale it. If we know there's a thousand pulses coming out here for one revolution here, and we know we're turning down 25 to 1 here, and we know the diameter of this drum, we know, for instance, that we can, um, in one second, we know this is going to do 25,000 um, pulses at full speed, and we know this is going to do 314 millimetres. So, 314 divided by 25,000 gives us a scaling factor so that we know not only how fast it's going, but we also know how far it's travelling. Okay? Right, as explained on the block diagram, the control system needs to give the information to the variable speed drive as to what to do, direction, speed. But it also needs to give it the acceleration and the deceleration. And it does this by giving it a trapezoidal um, signal. So starting at zero speed it will accelerate up, reach the speed that it's required to do, travel a lot, oh, wouldn't do that, then it will decelerate and then it will land at position. You end up with what's called a trapezoidal waveform. Okay. Where this part is the acceleration, this part is the deceleration, and this is the level speed. Okay. Now this is the speed. in say millimeters per second so we know our full speed here was 314 millimeters per second this is time in measured in seconds and the distance traveled is this area here and we get that by multiplying this by this so millimetres per second multiplied by seconds, seconds cancel out, 
equals millimetres. So that this area, in other words, that multiplied by that, is the distance travelled. Now the control system needs the information from the HMI as to where to go and at what speed, what acceleration, deceleration. So the information it needs is the target, sometimes called the demand. Speed, sometimes called velocity. There is a difference between them, but I'm not going to go into that now. Acceleration, we just shorten it to ac and deceleration. I normally just shorten it to decel. If we know where we're starting from, that becomes our actual position. Then the amount we're going to travel is the difference between where we are and where we're going. So that becomes the distance that we, got, we need to move. The speed will be the speed that we wish it to go at to reach the, the desired um, target in the correct, at the correct time. And the acceleration, deceleration is do we want it to start gently or do we want it to get off to, to a fast, st fast start or a fast stop? Probably de determined by the, the artistic people what they want. Um, so if you were doing a gentle start, you'd have a gentle acceleration and then a travel and then you might want to stop it quite quickly so you might have a very sharp deceleration or you might decide you want a, a much quicker acceleration like that and a much slower deceleration like that. You might come up here and you might just travel very slowly. Whatever, the, the trapezoid trapezoidal form will change shape according to how fast you're travelling, what your acceleration deceleration is and how fast you want to go. Okay. The relationship between distance, speed and time is quite simple really. You know if you're going to drive from London to Manchester, it's 200 miles, if you're driving at 50 miles an hour, it's going to take you four hours. You know that. Okay. And that's because speed equals distance over time. So using the example we just used, um, if you want to know how long it's going to take, time equals distance over speed, 200 miles, 50 mile an hour equals 4 hours. It's the same in automation. There we're dealing with millimetres per second, or whatever, as a speed, or degrees per second if it's a revolve, or something like that. But the actual relationship between distance, speed and time is the same. OK, so this is my little test rig. And here we have a small stepper, stepper motor, so it's a tiny little motor. Quite noisy, but it's um, something I had lying around, so I, I used it for my test rig. There's an encoder connected directly to the motor. Uh, it's a fairly normal size encoder. Um, we've got the variable speed drive here. It's a tiny little drive because it's only a tiny little motor. And then our controller is this little PLC over here. Um, and this is connected to the HMI via this cable here, which I'll show separately in a moment. And then there's a 24 volt power supply here that's powering everything. And then I'll just show you a quick move so you can see it moving. Um, and you'll see how noisy it is, which uh, in this case would have uh, an advantage because we'll be able to hear what's happening 
when you're seeing what's going on on screen in a moment. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do a, a quick move just so you can see the motor running and sort of see the noise that it makes. Um, and you'll also see it accelerate and decelerate. <laughs> Okay, this is the HMI for our system, QAxis, um, and this is what gives the, the PLC all its demands, accelerations and decelerations. So at the moment we can see that over here our actual position is at zero and we're on Q1 at the moment with a demand of 1000, a speed of 999 which is 99.9%, an acceleration of 10 which is 10 tenths of deceleration of 10 tenths of a second, one second. So it will accelerate and decelerate quite quickly, uh, get to a thousand and it will do it in six seconds. So if we press go, you should hear it in the background as well as seeing it on the display. So you can see over here it's moving, heading towards a thousand and when it gets there at position the move is done. And if we want to send it back to zero Put the preset position in, got a zero here. This time we've got a speed of 87.2% with three seconds of acceleration, three seconds of deceleration. So if we send it off and it'll do it now in 8.4 seconds, so it takes slightly longer. And we press go. It's taking longer to accelerate and longer to decelerate. Well, I hope that's been a useful introduction to how stage automation works. Uh, there's more videos on our YouTube site that shows how the HMI works if you, if you want to um, look at those. Um, part three will be um, some video that I'll take in some real theatres and some real automation. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that until after this pandemic coronavirus thing is all over. So I'm not quite sure when that will be. So until then, goodbye.